Welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to do something a little quick and easy. Uh, we're going to be looking at what CocoaPods are and how to install them into your iOS project. They are a super important part of iOS development and we're going to look at what they are and how to get up and running with them. So first and foremost, a CocoaPod is a library you can add to your iOS app. It's basically code that other people have written that you can include to leverage whatever they provide uh, as well as make your development process just faster. So there are tens of thousands of CocoaPods out there. Um, if we open up Safari and let's search for Realm Swift pod, this is the example pod that we're going to use. Realm is a very popular uh, onboard uh, database for your iOS app. And you can see that there's a website here, CocoaPods.org. Um, every company uses CocoaPods more or less to publish their libraries and packages, everyone from Google to Facebook to uh, Microsoft, etc., so on and so forth. So it's very easy to get these set up in your project and install them, which is why they're so darn popular. Um, once you install them, you can just import them and start using them right away. Some, some things to take note of that are kind of gotchas uh, with CocoaPods, the first one being... Uh, be careful about if a pod is made for Swift or Objective-C. They are indeed different, and you want to make sure that there's compatibility. Um, and also make sure whatever version you're using uh, in terms of iOS, if you're targeting iOS 12 in the App Store, uh, that the CocoaPod supports it. But for the most part of these issues, you don't run into that often. So um, let's go ahead and fire up Xcode. Let's create a new project. We're going to do single view app. We're going to call it, let's call it pod. Hit enter. Save it to your desktop. And what we don't usually do is let's close up Xcode. From here, what we want to do is open up terminal. And terminal is how we're going to actually install CocoaPods. Or rather, how that's how we're going to actually set up the infrastructure that we need to install CocoaPods. So CocoaPods has to be installed on your computer first and foremost. It actually manages installing one or more pods, which is kind of the abbreviated form that people say it in. And I already have it, but what you want to do is you want to do gem install CocoaPods. And if I hit enter here, actually, you'll see that it'll try to either update, install, or it'll just yell at me because I already have it. Um, and it actually tells me I have an error, um, but that's because I already have it. and. If you run into other errors, what you can actually go ahead and do is just head over to Google and type in how, how to how to install CocoaPods Mac OS. And you'll, you'll find every single error. There's even step by steps. But this is actually how to install the framework to get CocoaPods in your app. Once you have it installed, what you want to do is you want to CD to the path of your project. So in that case, it's it's on our it's on our desktop for us. So we're gonna do CD desktop, and we called it, I believe we called it test. No, we called it pod. Just kidding. Once we're here, if we type in ls, we'll see the stuff that's in our project. Uh, we don't actually need to do anything with that, but we, what we can do is we can say pod init like so. Pretty simple. Hit enter, and you'll see that it did something. If we type in ls again. Now we notice we have this pod file. So we can do uh, open pod file. And actually, if you even open the folder right from your desktop, you'll see the pod file is in here. And you can just double click it and open it from there as well. Here we can define uh, all of our pods, all our dependencies that we want before we actually run the install command. So if you're working in Swift like we are, we want to make sure that we have this use frameworks. And anything with this. Uh, percent sign, or sorry, anything with this pound sign is hash before it, we can get rid of, we're not going to focus on that for now, as well as these up here. So all we need to do to include a pod is type in a pod, pod lowercase, and then the name of the pod. So you can find the names online, generally documentation for every pod available will have its name. You can also search on cocopods.org. Um, I use this very often, like most iOS developers, so I do know several offhand. We're going to work with Realm Swift, which is a Swift version of Realm, the onboard database. 
we're going to hit Command S, Command Q to save and quit. And to actually install it, what we're going to do is we're going to hit pod install, hit enter, and you'll see that it'll actually start going through the process of all the pods that we added to that file and installing them one by one. So here we can see that it's installing Cocoa Pods, or sorry, it's installing Realm, and it gives us the version that it's installing. Realm is a little bit larger. I probably should have picked something a bit smaller, but let's see how long this takes to install. It shouldn't be too, too slow. You can see it's also installing Realm Swift. So your first question might be, why are there two here? We only added one. The reason for this is Realm Swift has a dependency in its actual framework on Realm. So by you including this one, it inherently includes this one, uh, Realm. So it actually finished here. We can ignore all this nonsense. Um, it's done, no errors, it's all green. Um, something super important now to note is if you hit LS, uh, which will show what's in your directory, you now have the, we had the pod that Xcode proj before, which is what usually you develop in, but now you have pod.xc workspace. When you install pods, you can no longer work in the .xc or Xcode proj. You want to work in the workspace. And the difference is very, very simple. The difference is the workspace actually brings in all the library code and pod code that you've installed, whereas a project does not. So as you can imagine, if we open this up and try to build, it's not going to build because it's trying to bring in the code that we installed via the pods, but it's not able to. So how do we open the project? Well, just like any other Xcode iOS project, you can just open up your directory. And instead of opening up this, let's open up this. And we'll see right away that it looks identical. Nothing is different except we have this folder called pods that you'll never change anything in. Um, this is all the code from the actual pod that you installed. You can see Realm and Realm Swift in here. Feel free to go through this, uh, not necessary, but if we come into here, we can see everything else is the same. We can go to our view controller, and now actually we can import, if it decides to autocomplete, I wanna show you guys that it does show up. We actually might need to do a build. Once we do a build, it should pick it up. If not, we'll have to deal with what's going on. Uh, once you do install pods, and you can notice, as I'm sure you're noticing right now, the builds start taking a little longer because not only does it have to build your code, but it needs to also build all the code that you've included via Cocoa Pods. So keep that in mind. It definitely is a performance implication depending on how many pods and libraries you include. So let's give it a second here to compile. This takes too, too long. I might pause the video here and bring it back so you guys don't have to sit here and watch the loading bar. Cool, there it goes. There, we, the error just went away because it found it and it built successfully. And that's about it. You've included a Cocoa Pod in your app. And this is such an essential part of iOS development because a lot of components that you see across various apps, whether they are, here, let's close this so my fan goes down a little bit. Um, but whether they are uh, like spinners or alerts, if you've seen common components across iOS apps, chances are that they're using a pod that's shared across them. Um, there's so many out there, so I encourage you to take a look at them. I'll throw a link to CocoaPods.org down below as well as some references, some really great pods that are very popular. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like below if you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, um, I love hearing from you guys. Leave a comment below. Subscribe if you're new. I post regularly for uh, iOS videos, software engineering in general, uh, technology videos, and a couple of miscellaneous things here and there. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video.